Systemic mastocytosis is diagnosed in people who have some mast cells with specific abnormalities or a collection of self-activating mast cells in one or more of their internal organs. Most commonly affected is the bone marrow where mast cells are made. Skin involvement such as the freckle-like rash of urticaria pigmentosa may also be present in systemic mastocytosis. Systemic mastocytosis is unusual in children and testing for this diagnosis is done only if the child has a serum tryptase level higher than 100 nanograms per milliliter or if there are blood cell abnormalities that need to be studied by bone marrow biopsy or if there are other signs of systemic disease such as a persistently enlarged spleen. The definite diagnosis of systemic mastocytosis at all ages requires a bone marrow biopsy and aspirate, that's blood-like fluid collected from inside the bone marrow, and usually a blood test to measure the amount of tryptase present. The one major criterion for diagnosis of systemic mastocytosis is the finding in bone marrow or another internal organ of multiple dense accumulations of mast cells. The four minor criteria are in the bone marrow biopsy tissue, more than 25% of the mast cells are not typical in their shape. In bone marrow aspirate, or another internal organ, or blood, a mast cell protein called C-kit is abnormal and has what is referred to as the 816 kit mutation. Mast cells in bone marrow aspirate, other internal organs, or blood, are found to have on their surface molecules called CD2 or CD25. And last, total serum tryptase level when symptoms are absent is greater than 20 nanograms per milliliter. But this criterion cannot be used if the patient has a clonal non-mast cell associated blood disorder such as a leukemia or a myelodysplastic syndrome as they may drive the tryptase level up without the involvement of extra mast cells. How do we diagnose systemic mastocytosis then? If the major criterion is present, along with any one minor criterion, the diagnosis is systemic mastocytosis. If the major criterion is not present though, the presence of any three minor criteria will make the diagnosis of systemic mastocytosis. Indolent systemic mastocytosis is diagnosed in people who fit the criteria we just discussed. There are other, more aggressive classifications of systemic mastocytosis. They are fortunately very rare, and information about diagnosis and classification can be found at the UK Mastocytosis um, Support Group website. Now, when is it safe to cut corners? An adult with urticaria pigmentosa rash and a baseline tryptase level above 20 nanograms per milliliter, who has few or no symptoms, enjoys normal life activities, or who manages mild symptoms with occasional medication, could defer the bone marrow biopsy until such time as symptoms increase or new symptoms appear, or until they have a blood cell abnormality or enlarged liver or spleen or lymph nodes, then it becomes important to have a definite diagnosis and classification of their mastocytosis. Remember that a person with mastocytosis may also have any other disease, so ask your doctor to evaluate new symptoms with mastocytosis on the back of their mind rather than assuming everything new will be caused by or related to mastocytosis. It all starts with an accurate diagnosis, so be sure and be safe.